Good morning, everyone, and thanks for coming to KCC. My name's Joshua Mosing, and here are a few things that are coming up at the church. On Tuesday, we have our ladies' Bible study at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. They're doing Having a Merry Spirit. Come on down for our Good Friday service on the 25th at 7 p.m. And following, of course, Easter Sunday, we have service at 10.30 a.m. If you come early at 9.15, there's a free breakfast hosted by Teen Challenge. And after the service, we have an egg hunt for the kids. Coming up, Wednesday, March 30th, we have a special event. It's Fine Arts Night, where the students will be able to present their fine arts entries for everyone to come and enjoy. And tonight, we have prayer meeting in the fellowship hall at 5 p.m. as usual, and 6 p.m. at Pastor Josh's house is current gin. So come on down. Thank you for coming to KCC this morning. We're happy to have you. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, and we want to turn our attention to the Word this morning, and uh, I, I want to just put out a challenge to you during uh, this, this season of Easter. Uh, there, there's two, two uh, times in the church here, Christmas and Easter, that people are more attuned to uh, Jesus. Both of those celebrations are good because they're about Jesus. We're celebrating Him, His resurrection, His birth. And, uh, and so they're, they're more open to be receptive to hearing. I want to challenge you to look for opportunities to talk to people about Jesus. Is that, would that be something pretty simple to do? And, uh, and maybe, maybe even among yourselves as, as people who already know the Lord, you, you could use a, a, a special greeting, say, He is risen. You know, remember we used to do that? And they answered, He is risen indeed. Amen. And... Uh, and just give opportunity for people to hear that He is risen before Easter Sunday morning even. Amen? And who knows, that maybe just something little simple like that might begin to open their heart to, that when they come Easter Sunday morning, even if they don't do it then or say something to you then or you say something to them, they may come and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, God is good and it is Easter time and I was going to preach on the cross this morning and... Uh, and I know all the songs and the message that came and uh, uh, all fit in that mold, and that's good. And uh, I, I think there's two ways to look at things sometimes. You know that, that, that the God of all creation knows what each and every one of us needs. Amen? And, and when we come to a, any given service, uh, I guarantee you, all of you sitting out here today, different ones of you have different needs. You have different things that are happening in your life. You have, if you were to verbalize prayer requests, would have a, a lot of variation in those prayer requests, wouldn't we? And so uh, God is able to, uh, to touch us and God is able to speak to us in many ways in a service. And, uh, and this is why I believe more and more I want to challenge you. God wants the people more involved in the service too. He wants to use you to speak into hearts and lives. And so uh, I, I felt last night I changed the... Uh, it would have been much easier to go with what I'd been working on throughout the week, but I felt led to change the message today, which isn't necessarily uh, going to be a, a thought of as an Easter message, although it is, because this message isn't possible without Jesus. <laughs> Nothing that we do is, is possible without the power of the Holy Spirit, without Christ living in us. He's not asking us to do anything in our own strength, in our own power, amen? And so... Uh, I switched up, and I want to talk to you today about, about putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I felt like the Lord just spoke to my spirit that, that there are just a lot of people. There are a lot of people, and I've, I've talked about it some in recent messages already, I know, but there's a lot of people in our, in our nation, but there's a lot of people in our churches that are living under a spirit of heaviness. And uh, how many know, I don't believe that's how God desires for us to operate. I believe that no matter what's going on, and we're going to go through times and difficulties, we understand that, we all do, but, but I believe God doesn't want us to operate under a continual spirit of heaviness. He wants to lift that from us. He wants to take that from us. So the, the, and, and we'll see in the message today, one of the reasons why is because it's one of the best ways we can glorify God when people see that we're going through the stuff just like everybody else goes through the stuff, but we don't have to 
take a drink of alcohol. We don't have to shoot up with something. We don't do all that. But our God whom we serve is able to take us through anything we face, amen, and still have a joyful spirit and a spirit of triumph in Jesus' name. Praise God. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, if you want to turn with you this morning, we want to just look at uh, a couple of verses. You might put a marker there. We'll kind of look back at that from time to time. Just the, the first three verses. It says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Hallelujah. If you have the Spirit of the Lord God upon you, you've got something. That, that ought to set you shouting for the rest of this week already. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, now we'll, we'll go back and cover a little bit of that, but that's not the key part of the Scripture. These next verse is, To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, I mean, we do mourn, but not as others mourn. The oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There's a lot of symptoms of this, quote, spirit of heaviness that that may manifest itself in different ways. Uh, It may manifest in, in excessive mourning. It's all right, we do mourn. But it can become excessive to where it controls our life and we can't move on. How many know God wants us to move on? It's not His intent that we would mourn forever, but that we would move on and He will help us to do so. It may be in just a continued sorrow and grief over anything that we just can't, uh, we can't seem to pull it together or someone uh, brokenhearted, all these kind of come together. Something happened and, uh, in their life and, and their heart was broken and, and there's inner hurts or there's, a, there's a, something in their spirit that they can't seem to get past. And, and uh, rejection is something that can bring on this spirit of heaviness, uh, a spirit of feeling like you don't fit, nobody cares. Uh, you feel rejection or insomnia or depression or, or despair or dejection. Uh, some people are in despair a lot. Just a, just a general sense of hopelessness. You see, a lot of people would be under a spirit of heaviness in our world today if, if they get their eyes on the, on the news and what's happening in our world. Uh, you, you would have a right to be feeling pretty hopeless. But God... Amen. He says, I don't intend for my people to be there in that condition. And uh, people have suicidal tendencies, uh, self-pity. I mean, oh, self-pity can drag us down into a, a total spirit of depression and, uh, and, uh, and heaviness in our lives that we, uh, we, just, uh, we just can't see up because everything's down. Well, the spirit of heaviness tries to take our joy for living and it takes away the Christian joy for serving. God, God, God wants us to do so much more than just praise Him on Sunday morning in a worship service. He wants us to live for Him, amen, that our whole being would be a, a, a worship unto Him by how we live our lives and how we serve Him. And, and, uh, but the enemy wants to load us down with this spirit of heaviness and darkness. He likes to keep those to whom, uh, who mourn in a perpetual state of mourning. And, uh, but Jesus came, and He pronounced help for us. We see this in the Scripture this morning. He pronounced help for us. In fact, we'll see in a moment that this Scripture is specifically speaking about Jesus Himself. As He began His ministry after His baptism and temptation in the wilderness, Scripture says that uh, He returned in the power of the Spirit. Remember that? Jesus was baptized. The Spirit drove Him in the wilderness. And then it says, when he returned, he returned in the power of the Spirit. And in the synagogue, he came there and he opened up the scroll, he said, and he began to read uh, uh, verses 1 and 2, Luke chapter 4. He began to read and he said this. He said, the Spirit of the Lord, he's going back and quoting Isaiah chapter 1, 
chapter 61, verse 1 and 2 here, said, The Spirit of the Lord, this is Jesus now in Luke 4, He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Wow. There's a lot of uh, things there. First of all, when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will have that anointing, amen? And, uh, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing upon your life that will break the heavy burden. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. But how many know we can be anointed, but He's also sent us? How many know a lot of those people that need to be hear the gospel aren't sitting in our churches on Sunday morning? He has anointed you, child of God. He's anointed each one of us uh, to look for the opportunities to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. We are sent. He has anointed. He has sent me. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. And he has sent me to set at liberty, not somebody else, uh, not wait until we can get them to the preacher, we can get them to a special service. He has sent you. He has sent you, amen, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And may I tell you, there's lots of people, even some of God's people, who are oppressed today, who need to be set free. This depicts the essence of Jesus' ministry. When you look, you, you could wrap his ministry up in these verses right here. This is who he was. This is what he did whenever he came to this earth. And I believe if you read the book of Acts in the early church, and you'll read his command that he sent us forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to do the same things that he did and even greater things, uh, it should be understood that it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon the people of God that drives the church to do the same things that Jesus did. Amen to preach the same message that he prayed, to lay hands on the sick and lay hands on the oppressed and see them delivered and see them set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, in verse 3 of our text, we, we go back there in uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3 for just a moment. I want to talk to you about that and about the garment of praise that's the message today, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, the NIV, most of my scriptures today are New King James. I, I've gone back to reading, a, it's a Bible I've had for a long time, but I've, you know, I just never, I've, and it's King, New King James, so I've gone back to reading it. So maybe this year, I don't know, Pastor Rick will take you forward. He's gone to the ESV, right, Pastor Rick? Is that what you're using now? Which one is it? Oh, he's using three different ones. Well, I can't keep up with that. So I'm just going backwards to the New King James for a little bit here. Amen. Verse number three there, he talks about it. We want to look at it. It says, uh, that, that spirit of heaviness, uh, the NIV says it's a spirit of despair. Has there ever been anybody in a spirit of despair? <laughs> uh, a spirit of despair. The Amplified says it this way, heavy, burdened, and a failing spirit, heavy burden, and a failing and a failing spirit. The Hebrew word here means to put on. Listen, to, if you look at the essence of the Hebrew, it means to put on. He says, "Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness." It means it means to put on to to wrap or to clothe yourself with this uh, this garment, uh, leaving no openings for hostile environment to penetrate. In other words, you're completely wrapped in the garment of praise. This garment of praise repels and replaces the heavy spirit that you had been experiencing. And, and I want to think with me for a moment. It's, it's, it's not rocket science or anything, but uh, however, uh, a warm coat does us no good if it's hanging in the closet. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Years ago, when I, we, me and Deshane used to go hunting, and always it was in, uh, for elk, it was in the end of November after Thanksgiving, so in eastern Oregon, it was snow season, it was cold season, and, and I, I bought a jacket finally that nothing seemed to penetrate that jacket. 
Now, my feet still froze. I couldn't seem to keep them warm. But that jacket, uh, it, was, it was fleece, and it was so heavy that even out at 20 below zero, I was warm in the, the torsos, all the area that the jacket covered. I was warm. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought about that in, in likeness to this, this garment of praise. Uh, I, I assume that we all know how to put on coats. If I went out in 20 below zero and said, well, I'm a bummer. I have forgotten and left my, my coat at home. I mean, I'm going to freeze pretty quick. I'm going to freeze pretty quick. And the elements are going to get to me. And, uh, but, but here's what we got to understand. Uh, I assume that we all know how to put on coats, but we do, do we know how to put on the garment of praise? God says it's something, as I read that scripture, right, and I understand it's like a lot of the other scriptures, it's not something that necessarily is automatic. Hello? You, you have to do something. How many know some of you sometimes have had to shake yourself even to just get out of bed? Some of you, that's like every morning. But sooner or later, there's, there's reasons why you'll get out of bed. How many know that? It, it may be that you've got a job you better go to. You might be fired. Uh, it may be that something special has happened. And, and in those days, you, you shake yourself and you make yourself get up maybe even a little extra early than what you really want to get up, don't you? Some people are shaking themselves right now. They're getting out of bed and ready to come to church just about now, and it's too late. But he says, put on. You put on the garment of praise. Psalms chapter 150, if you want to turn there real quick, it'll be on the, on the board for you too there. Though. But, but uh, you, you, you have to do something sometimes. You, you, how many know we make choices every day? Sometimes we make choices just to be mad. Now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes we just want to be mad, don't we? Now, we know, well, sooner or later we're going to have to get over it and get, get going. But for right now, I just want to be mad, and I want people to know that I'm mad. And as long as you choose to be mad and upset, how many know you're going to have pretty much a rotten day? And you're going to see everything through the scope of your madness. <laughs> And you're going to get other people all upset. And you're going to share your madness with other people and pollute their spirit and, and pollute their day because you just, uh, you're upset and you're mad and, and, and you, don't want to, you don't want to give it up yet. Sometimes I've had people say, I know I'm supposed to forgive. I know I should forgive. I had to forgive. But I'm not ready to forgive yet. Well, you better get ready pretty quick. Because if I read my Bible right, if you don't forgive those who've trespassed against you, then your trespasses aren't forgiven either. You don't have any choice. You had better decide. You had better give it up, and you had better forgive. Now, God will help you. He doesn't ask you to do anything that He doesn't help you. But you have to make a choice. You can continue to be unforgiving. You can continue to hold a grudge if you want to. Or you can say, God, help me to give it up. and Help me to not only forgive, but help me to love that person that I've been angry at or bitter at. And I'm telling you today, we can choose to put on the garment of praise. Now, whenever, whenever we put on our garment of praise, now, Brother Dale back there, his garment of praise probably won't sound exactly like the people up here on the platform. In fact, they might not invite him to play, sing on the platform. I don't know. I, I don't hear him over here singing, but I, I know that he's a worshiper and that he loves the Lord. But see, your garment of praise is between you and God. And he's not impressed how much I, I shout and praise and jump and dance and raise my hands on Sunday morning if that's the only time I do it. Because you need your garment of praise more than Sunday morning. Now, some, some people, I, I think they just come to get their fix on Sunday morning. And your garment of praise, it needs to, you need to put it on when there's nobody else there. Amen. When you don't have to hey, maybe have somebody else, it's okay. And that's part of why we have a worship team. They want to help us to enter into worship and, and get us into the spirit of it. But hey, man, what would happen if God's people came to church next Sunday morning and every one of us already had our garment of praise on? Amen. I, think, I think Sister Mandy, she, she, might, she might just look like she's uh, like a turtle up here dancing around or something. Because she would probably, she'd probably be shocked at all of Kent Christian Center. Shouting and dancing in the aisles? No, listen, let me just say something. I understand that, and it's okay, and we do get excited. But the garment of praise goes much deeper than just bodily action. Right. Psalms 150, listen to this. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. 
Praise him in his mighty firm. That means, yeah, praise him here in the sanctuary, but, but not only here, you praise him out there, everywhere you go. Praise him in his mighty firm. Praise him for his mighty acts. Yes, indeed. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel, timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. That makes pastors really nervous, that part there. But uh, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise Him. You praise Him. Not just come to hear somebody else praise Him. Not sit back inactive in a worship service and let the worship team do your praising or everybody else. You decide to lift up your voice and give praise to Him because He is worthy of praise no matter what's happened in your life, no matter how many things may have seemed to have gone sideways during the week. He is still worthy of praise. He just gave you all those reasons in the first part of that chapter there. He's a mighty God. Amen. You need to praise Him, give glory and honor to Him. We praise Him, we praise Him, not just listen to others. And we, we understand this. Uh, turn to somebody here this morning and say, do you have breath? And then say, please don't blow it on me. No, no, no. no. Do you have any breath left in you whatsoever? He said, let everything that has breath. Amen. How many old people use that breath? to even curse God and do a lot of other things, how much more should the children of God put on the garment of praise and give praise to Him? We have the breath to do so, amen, and we ought to be thankful for that, and so give praise and glory and honor unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I think it ought to be really, when we stop, maybe, and there's even that quiet pause, says, hey, Pastor Rick or me or whoever it might be, or man, says, let's just take a few moments to praise God. Man, I think, I think it should just be almost instantaneous. Everybody's like, whoa, hallelujah, this is my opportunity. And we just lift our hands and lift our hearts and begin to praise Him. But often, you know, it gets really quiet. Hello? Listen, if we can only praise God when there's, when there's the musicians and everybody else kind of warming us up to it, we've got a problem. Because praise needs to be resident in your spirit. Uh, that, that when it's just you and God alone, there's times when, when I, I tell you, when you begin to put on the garment of praise as God intended you to, you'll have times when praise will erupt. It'll erupt. And there won't even necessarily be a reason for it. There'll be other times when you have to put it on because you don't feel like it, things aren't going right, and, and you don't feel like praising the Lord, but you need to do it anyway because He said to. He said to put that garment of praise on. Psalms 8.2. In Psalms 8.2 it says, Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Uh, the NIV in your version says ordained praise. And, and I believe that praise gives us strength. It says you are, have ordained strength. Listen to this. Because of, here's why he has ordained strength through praise. Because of your enemies. Does anybody have any enemies? And that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. You know, I, I, believe, I believe, first of all, I believe the devil himself. I believe he hates it when God's people truly understand this. And when he's trying, he's trying to load us down with a burden of heaviness over all the stuff of life. And we begin to praise God. I think it drives him crazy. I really do. I think, I think he's trying to figure, I don't know if I've got through to them or not. I don't know if they're listening to the message that I'm trying to send to them and send them into a spirit of depression and heaviness. I don't know because, and I think maybe he would quit trying so much if every time he did it, we just begin to praise God. How many know, how many know if anybody had any sense, he wouldn't keep doing something that's not working that he's trying to destroy you with. If we just put on the praise... And some people say, well, I, if I don't feel like it, I shouldn't do it. You know, that's the time you ought to do it. I thought we walked by faith, not by our feelings anyway. Did I miss something somewhere? And so we praise Him, not just when we feel like it, but we praise Him because He is worthy of praise and because He asks us to praise Him and because it's the right thing to do. We give Him praise. Now, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 6, it's interesting. In the New Testament, Jesus quoted the first part of Psalms 8, verse 2. 
and uh, to the religious leaders. Remember when the children were crying out in the temple, Hosanna, and, uh, and the religious leader says, you need to shut these guys down. <laughs> you, you need to tell them to stop this. And uh, they said to him, do you hear what these are saying, Matthew 21, 16? And Jesus said to them, yes, yes, have you never read? Now, these are guys that have read. <laughs> I mean, he's actually kind of, listen, guys, remember? Wake up here. Have you never read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants you have perfected praise? Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have perfected praise? Maybe, church, first of all, maybe we need to go down to children's church to learn how this works. And remember back there in Psalms, he didn't quote the rest of it. But remember, it's to steal the avenger. Amen. It's to, it's to put the enemy to flight because we have an enemy. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your happiness. He, he doesn't mind if you're a grouchy, old, grunchy Christian that isn't leading anybody else to Jesus. And nobody would want what you have anyway. Amen. But whenever they see that you've got the same problems they got, that you're going through the same stuff they're going through, and yet you have praise on your lips and you're giving glory and honor to God, it speaks volume. It says it gives glory to God. That's the whole purpose for all of this. And we give a garment of praise and we give glory to Him. It lifts up the name of Jesus. And it makes Jesus palatable. It makes people hungry for Him. It makes them hungry for what we have because it's not normal. It's not normal. The normal thing is to complain and gripe and carry on. Not to give praise and glory and honor unto God in the midst of our situations. So, do you not hear what they're saying? Yes, yes, Jesus said, I hear. And haven't you read? <laughs> haven't you read? And uh, in fact, you know, he said later, he said, if they didn't, if they didn't praise me, the, the rocks would cry out. I don't know about you, but I don't want any rocks doing my praising for me. Back to our text in Isaiah 61, just verse 3, real quickly. He said he's going to console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes. And there's, there's a message in each one of these. The oil of joy for the mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. That he may be glorified. Point taken. You want to glorify God? You want to lift up the name of Jesus? Put on the garment of praise. Ask God to help you. Now, now listen, church, I'm I, I not preaching to you of something that I haven't experienced and that some of you haven't experienced, maybe all of you. I've had times when I've done it and times when I haven't. Right? Right? I've had times when I've had to choose to praise God. I didn't feel like it. Nothing was going like I thought it should go. And uh, I had to make a choice. I could continue to look at things as they are and complain about them or feel bad about them or, or sit around and feel sorry for myself and have a pity party. Or I could begin to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I can't tell you that when you begin to put on the garment of praise that, that all of the problems will just go away. I'm not saying that, but it's amazing how they just don't seem quite so big after a while. Because you're looking at the one who is above all the problems, amen? You're looking at the ones who there is no problem. He can solve them all. He can take care of them all. And when you get your eyes in the right place, a lot of these things down here that used to be so big just don't matter anymore. And part of the problem, too, if you understand this, a lot of things that we get all upset and, and allow this heaviness to come upon us are things that never even materialize. Hello? And that's God, I think God is saying, I'm trying to save you from worrying, and fretting, and stewing, and, and allowing the enemy to heavy, load you down with this heavy burden of heaviness because a lot of what you're, you're burdened down with is not going to even happen anyway. And listen, there's hardships that we face in life, and I know there's very real difficulties. Moms and dads and children and, and our loved ones that walk away from God, don't know the Lord, or there's, there's, there's hard things. But we're not praising God because people are doing things wrong or people are away from God. We're praising Him because of who He is. Amen? And He is always worthy of our praise. Just a few quick scriptures. Proverbs 15, 13 says, 
A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. Have you ever noticed that people just like to be around happy people? Is there anybody here that you, you like to be around really sour people and mad people and people are always upset? And what happens? That drags you down, doesn't it? It, it taints your spirit. We, we love people. We love to be around people that are upbeat, that are happy, and uh, that are excited. And how much more should the people of God be upbeat and happy and excited, amen, as we praise God? And, and we, know, we know that we live in a wicked world. We know what's going on. We're not, our eyes aren't closed to that. We're not stupid. We understand that, but we know that we serve the God, amen, who is more than enough and who is much bigger and whom every knee one day is going to bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, by the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You see, your, your whole spirit, your whole countenance can be broken. Proverbs eighteen fourteen: the spirit of man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit. It's amazing. For, for 40 or 50 years now, I read reports of doctors from time to time that they're saying that in the medical profession that they, they still believe that a lot of sickness and stuff comes on because of just, just a bad attitude, a bad spirit, uh, uh, people just uh, angry, mad, upset, unforgiving. All these things bring on a lot of things. And, uh, and may God help us. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be sick because I didn't have a a right heart, amen. I didn't put on the garment of praise. Spirit of, spirit of man will sustain him but in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is a promise from God. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Hallelujah. Now, notice this. He didn't say if you, when you. <laughs> you will pass through some difficult things in life. But how many know God is able to sustain you? And God is able to sustain you with a great spirit, amen? And, and He's able to sustain you so that you can give glory and honor to Him. Say, my God. I, I still like, I still like, I go back again and again to the, to the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. They said, we know that our God is able. It's not a, it's not a, God could do anything. God could spare us from anything. But if He doesn't spare us from being thrown in, we still will not bow. Hallie, what a testimony. What a testimony. Isaiah 59, 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, and the enemy will come in like a flood sometimes, whoosh, it seems hopeless, it seems it's not going to work, and he come in like a flood, but it says the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I say to you, there are many other messages that could be preached and how you can get through the difficulties of life. But one of those standards that the Lord will lift up and you will have a part is choosing to worship and praise Him and give glory and honor to Him. Amen. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment of praise against what the enemy is trying to do to you when he comes in like a flood. Amen. Just lift up a flood of praise to God. And begin to glit. You know what? In the, in the persecution, remember in the book of Acts when they were persecuted and they, they slapped on the wrist a little at first and they said, now you go away and you just quit teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. And you'll read the prayer there when, they, when the church gathered together, when they got back with the rest of the church, it says they lifted up their voice in one accord. And you'll see the beginning of that prayer. They were, doing, they were doing exactly what we read in the Psalms today. They were giving praise and glory and honor to God, acknowledging Him. They weren't even talking about their persecution. They weren't even talking about what had just happened to them. They were saying, God, you are awesome. God, you are mighty. And they were getting their focus in the right place. And then from there... They, they said, God, now we want you to do, slay all these people that are, that are telling us this stuff. No. <laughs> they, they said, God, give us boldness. Give us boldness to speak your word. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't need to shut down. We need to speak even more. We need to proclaim the name of Jesus even more. <laughs> Amen. And it says that the place was shaken where they were gathered together and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of those had already been filled at Pentecost. I mean, you know, you need a daily filling. 
God has a fresh filling for you today. And may I say to you that I believe it only enhances this as we put on the garment of praise. Uh, we, we, we sing that song, and we'll sing that in just a moment, to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says, praise with the spirit and with understanding. May I challenge you, are there any Pentecostal people in the building today? Are there any baptized in the Holy Spirit, tongue-talking, amen, filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit people in the building today? I want to challenge you. God gave you that prayer language for a purpose. Not so you could just say, hey, I prayed in tongues 20 years ago or at camp last summer. Now I'm all in. I'm a Pentecostal. You need to use that prayer language every day. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you in this. When you're down and you don't feel like praying and you don't know what to pray, and that's why I think we don't sometimes because, well, what do I do? Well, first of all, you can just begin to look into the Psalms and you can begin to praise God for who He is and His mighty acts and His mighty deeds. That's a lot of what the psalmist was doing in many of the Psalms. But I want to challenge you this. If you'll allow the Holy Spirit, He will begin to work in you. Just begin to pray in that heavenly language. Now, you can be at home by yourself and you can shout. You might be at work and you can't shout, but you can pray quietly right there at your desk. You can pray quietly in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. I said begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't just wait till you come to church next time. Don't just wait till somebody gets your motor running until you finally can do it. You have been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit for a purpose. That language is right there for you. Praying in the Spirit is available to you instantly any time of the day. Begin to pray in the Spirit, and then you'll find you'll begin to pray in your, even your, your native tongue, whether it's English or whatever it is. You'll begin to have enhancement in how you pray with the freedom to pray, even in English that you didn't have before. Hello. Hello. Pray in the Spirit. Pray at all times. Amen. And pray in the Spirit, and God will help you. Pray in the Spirit of God because He's the one that said, you need to put on the garment of praise. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to praise Him. Let it roll from your mouth. Begin to give glory and honor to Him. Amen. And pretty soon, uh, I, I, I know, I've tried this, and I understand this. Uh, I said earlier, I've had times when I let the heaviness get me down, and I just wallowed in the mud. I've had times when I've made an exact choice that I'm talking to you about today that I believe is very biblical. I chose to put on the garment of praise even though I didn't feel like it. Even though things still weren't going right, even when I started, things still weren't going right, but I did it anyway. And I'm here to tell you that if you'll practice it, God, who wrote these books, amen, who gave and inspired the men to write these words, is the God who will, who will anoint them, amen, and make them come alive in your heart and life. If you will begin to put on the garment of praise, things will begin to change. You'll begin to see with a different perspective. Your heart, the heaviness. Because I tell you what, the devil wants to burden God's people with a load of heaviness. He wants us just... You know what I'm talking about? I know you do because I know there's some here today that for whatever reasons, whatever reasons, you're living under a load of heaviness that I believe God wants to set you free today. I want us to stand. And the worship team can come, but while they're coming, I want us just to sing a cappella because... I want to hear you, and I want you to hear others. I want us to sing this little song that we used to sing years ago, Put on the Garment of Praise. And, and, and let me say something. I, I believe the devil needs to hear us praise. He doesn't need us just to hear us think. I don't believe the devil can read my mind. Only God knows the mind of man and the heart of man. They can read my actions from past history that I might be thinking or doing something. But I believe he needs to hear, and I believe it's part of what, when we put on this praise, it sends him packing. It sends him packing. And so, let's just sing, first of all, a cappella, and lift our voices to him. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. 
Oh, magnify the Lord. Now just lift your hands and lift your hearts and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah to Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I give you glory and honor. I magnify your name. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God, mighty God. You are a holy God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fill this place, O oh Lord. We fill this place with your praise. We fill this place with glory and honor unto the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. And we give you praise and glory and honor. We bless your name. We magnify your name. You are the creator of all things. There is nothing that is too hard for you. There is nothing that is too difficult for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We put on the garment of praise this morning. We put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, heaviness, uh, heaviness, and a heavy spirit uh, be gone in Jesus' name. Let the glory fill this place. Uh, Lord, baptize your children. Baptize believers this morning right where they stand in this service with the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We praise your name. We lift up that name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God the mighty God. Is there anything too hard for God? Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too hard for you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, in that name of Jesus, we proclaim, we proclaim today that a spirit of heaviness has to leave. We agree together, according to Matthew 18, we agree together and we bind a spirit of heaviness that is bound some of God's children sitting in this service this morning. We bind you, spirit of heaviness. In the name of Jesus, we command you to go. I pray, God, that your children will put on their spirit of praise. Hallelujah. Will put on their garment of praise. And they will lift their voice. And they will lift their hearts. And they will give praise and glory unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We magnify your name. Name, oh God, we lift your name up, oh God. Your name is higher than any other. Uh, your name is higher than any other. You're the Alpha, the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You are everything in between. Hallelujah. You're the Lord God, our Savior. You're the Lord God who sustains us. Hallelujah. You're the Lord God, our healer. You're the Lord God, our deliverer. Whatever we have need of, uh, we proclaim that you are God. You are God. Hallelujah. We proclaim, Lord God, and in this world today that we live in, with all of the turmoil, Lord, that you are still God. You are still sitting in heaven, and you're looking at the plans of man, according to Psalms 1. You're looking at the devices of man, and Lord, you're laughing at all the men that think they're in control, all those who think that they will do this, and they will do that, because you are the mighty God. Amen. Things are happening just as you've declared they will happen, Lord God, and they will continue to happen just as you have declared so. Hallelujah. And so we lift up your name. We look unto you, Lord God. You're our source. You're our help. You're our strength. We don't look to anyone else. We don't look to man. We don't look to man's ideas and man's ways, but we look to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Fill this place, O oh Lord. Fill this place, O oh Lord, with your spirit. Fill our hearts, O oh Lord, this morning. Uh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. And lift, uh, lift in the name of Jesus. Uh, lift in the name of Jesus. Uh, that spirit of heaviness, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we command the spirit of heaviness to leave, uh, to leave your people, to leave this church, uh, to leave individuals, oh God, to leave families, oh God. I pray in the place of a spirit of heaviness, there will be a spirit of joy, uh, hallelujah, the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There will be joy in the camp uh, and joy in our homes and joy in our church, uh, joy on the job, Lord God. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lama Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let your Holy Spirit flow through this place now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For that garment of praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that, that we can give praise and glory and honor to you. And it can dispel the avenger, Lord. It can dispel the heaviness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb that washes away my sins and makes me whole again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you paid the price, uh, that you took the stroke, the penalty that should have been mine so that I could go free, uh, so that I could be reconciled, hallelujah, so that I could have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, amen, so that I could worship and praise my Creator God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God most high. Hallelujah, maker of heaven and earth and all that is. Uh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you the honor. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, want, I want our deacons to come this morning. I want our deacons to come. And, 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 and Joe, you've gone off the board, but I want you to come. This will be your last act this morning. Amen. For a while anyway, maybe. And those who were voted on, Jesse, last Sunday afternoon at our annual business meeting, uh, Brother Gannon's term had expired, but he was voted back on. Jesse's brand new after being off for quite a number of years. Would you turn and face the congregation? Kind of spread yourself out here a little bit. I, I believe that God wants to, and He's already doing it, but I, got, I believe God wants to set people free from a spirit of heaviness this morning. That's why I switched the message and preached it. Because I believe there are people here that you need to be set free. And God is already doing it, but I want you to come. These are, these are our deacons of Kent Christian Center. And uh, I want you to come and allow them to pray for you this morning. If you're here this morning in, in your life or in your home, uh, it could be a lot of reasons for it. We're not here to, to look at all the reasons and try to analyze that. We're simply saying that Jesus wants to set you free from a spirit of heaviness, amen? He wants to set your family free from a spirit. He wants to set this church free from a spirit of heaviness, amen? Hallelujah. So you come, you come as the worship team just worships behind us this morning. You come and allow them to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. overcome Cause we sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah The Lamb is overcome Cause we sing hallelujah 